I'm Laura Flanders. After the elections of 2012, fueled with the financing of Citizens United, many, many voters felt a sense of relief, but also a sense of determination that something needs to change with our election law. Across the country, there are local initiatives to bring in different types of fair elections laws, but they'll be up against it says our next guest. Lisa Graves is the executive director of the Center for Media and Democracy. You know them from their work on ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council. Alec's involved in this story too, but others besides. Lisa, welcome, glad to have you. Thank you so much for having me. It's true, there are gonna be some real challenges to these local initiatives. Where are those challenges coming from? Well, that's right. Some of the challenges are just the nature of the United States Supreme Court. Uh, after George Bush uh, ended his presidency, the Supreme Court issued a major decision that many people have heard of called Citizens United, uh, where the Supreme Court basically said that the Congress did not have the power to limit uh, spending by outside groups to try to influence our elections. And that has dramatically changed the landscape of our elections. In fact, the 2012 elections were the most expensive elections in U.S. history. That's just the amount that was disclosed. The amount that was not disclosed, that was spent by outside groups, is extraordinary. In the midst of that, most people have lost uh, a, a focus on some of the other battles that are going on. One of those battles happened in 2011, in which a group that's associated with the American Legislative Exchange Council, a group called the Goldwater Institute in Arizona, challenged uh, a matching provision in Arizona clean elections mm. law, and they won before this very partisan Supreme Court. And that's one of the frustrating things about this picture, because a lot of people have said, well, if we've got Citizens United and the Supreme Court blocking us at the national level, maybe we can pursue local initiatives. And many states have pursued local initiatives over the last 20 years. Are those all imperiled by this Arizona decision? Does it set precedent that could set all those states back? Well, I think it's a very damaging decision. It's a decision in which the U.S. Supreme Court basically struck down a provision uh, in Arizona law that said if a candidate opts into the public financing system and his or her opponent uh, does not, or in essence has outside money coming in, that there would be uh, a power within the state law to level the playing field so that that candidate that opted into the good, clean election system wouldn't be outspent uh, by outside money. And what the Supreme Court struck down was that matching system to try to level the playing field. That decision was pursued by this Goldwater Institute that has many votes in various ALEC uh, committees. What we discovered and, po and posted just uh, this past week is a story that shows how uh, the Goldwater Institute took a million dollars in attorney's fees from that lawsuit from Arizona state taxpayers, turned around and paid its top litigator $50,000 in a bonus its other litigator, $35,000 in a bonus on top of the salaries they were already making, and then gave a sweetheart loan to one of, her, one of their board members for another $700,000. I mean, again, here we are in New York talking where very well-intentioned people are hoping that a fair elections law could get passed this year, um, but it sounds as if the odds they're up against are overwhelming. Well, I think we've got to take the long view on this. It's very important that uh, citizens stand up for clean elections and stand up for our democracy. Here in, the New York, uh, in New York State, if it passes, it will first go to the federal district court. Hopefully, it'll get a good judge who will uphold that law. It'll go to the Second Circuit, which is one of the only uh, circuit courts, appe appellate courts left in the country that has a majority of Democratic, uh, Democratic presidential appointees on that court. And then ultimately, it will go to the United States Supreme Court, which has a majority of Republican nominees on it until uh, perhaps there's a change in the makeup of that court. But there's reason to be optimistic because just this past election, in the midst of the incredible money being spent, uh, we uh, and a number of other groups helped support resolutions to overturn Citizens United, and they passed by overwhelming margins. So in Montana, a very red state, the uh, resolution, the initiative in essence to overturn Citizens United, to demand that it be overturned, passed by over 75% of the vote. In Colorado, the figures were similar, over 70% of the vote. Those are Republicans, Democrats, and independents who agree that there's too much money in our elections, there's too much corporate influence, and there's too much influence by these outside special interest groups that hide their donors. Uh, it's not just the Karl Rove operations or the efforts of, uh, of the people like David and Charles Koch. It's a whole set of millionaires and billionaires who are trying to basically buy our election. And the people, regardless of party, for the most part, are saying no. So those poll numbers might be something for people to bring to the attention of their legislators in New York State. What else do they need to tell their legislators if they look at that precedent coming out of Arizona and think, well, the courts have ruled? Well, I think that we have to say that in our democracy, courts are supposed to construe 
our rights um, and not make law, not be activist judges. And we reject that Citizens United decision. And quite frankly, I hope that citizens will say we reject that Arizona decision. Uh, we're going to pursue this because this is what it means to be a citizen in our democracy. In our democracy, we want to have every person have an equal vote, one person, one vote. In our elections, we want to ensure that people uh, can run and run on a fair and, and a fair playing field in our elections and have clean elections that aren't corrupted by outside money and outside influences. And so regardless of what the courts are saying, we as a people, as the sovereign people in our democracy, have to say no. So it sounds like New York voters might want to bring some of these stories, some of the statistics uh, to the attention of their legislators as they consider this fair elections law. What else do they need to tell their legislators perhaps about uh, the opponents to fair elections, say in Arizona, the, the Goldwater Institute group that you've profiled? Uh, what New Yorkers should tell uh, their elected officials about this Arizona uh, law and this decision is tell them about the group that's really behind it, because this is a group that is funded by billionaires like Charles Koch. It's not just a, a think tank that's uh, thinking about the best laws for us. It's a group that is really fueling a special interest agenda, the special interest agenda of, of billionaires. And moreover, the litigators who are involved in that case, uh, Clint Bullock, uh, Nick Dranius, these are guys who didn't have any problem, didn't bat an eye in taking huge bonuses, $50,000 a bonus for Nick Dranius, $35,000 bonus for Clint Bullock. These are bonuses that a nonprofit charity paid to its top lawyers after taking a million dollars in fees from Arizona state taxpayers. And it's not and it's not as though that's the only part of the story. The fact is, is that Clint Bullock is the man who's been behind attacking affirmative action for years and years. Um, this organization, uh, the uh, Goldwater Institute, is behind trying to kill public education, trying to underfund it and redirect tax dollars to the private sector. This is a group that's uh, hotly opposing the rights of workers. It is uh, uh, sending out misleading statistics about how much public workers are paid compared to the private sector. Uh, meanwhile, they're paying themselves these huge sums and giving sweetheart loans to one of their board members. And they have the audacity to com complain about how much teachers are paid mm -hmm. when they get, when each of them, in essence, has, has received in bonus, in, on top of their six-figure salaries, enough money to pay for a med the median family uh, in Arizona. And so these guys, uh, you know, have... Uh, I think conflicts of interest, they have a hardline right-wing ideological agenda, and the decision that they won from this very ideological, very partisan, very activist United States Supreme Court should not be given any credence by the people. The people need to move to overturn that and exert our control over how we want our elections to run and tell these unelected judges that they don't have a say in determining, really, what our laws are going to be. Their job is to, to interpret the law, not make the laws they've done at the behest of Clint Bullock and the Goldwater Institute. Lisa Graves, thanks so much for joining us. Lisa Graves, Lisa Graves is the executive director of the Center for Media and Democracy. We'll put a link at our website. Mm -hmm.